Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Paul, and today we're breaking down your A's, B's, and C's of The Walking Dead. The latest entry is now here with us getting the ones who live in a, in a lovely little room. Throughout this video, we're going to be breaking down the new entry and going through all the Easter eggs that pop up in the episode. There's lots of cool details from the 2010s as well, which is fitting since that's when their world ended. So come with me, my partner in grime, and let us take some time out for a bit of R&R. &R. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoy it, and make sure you subscribe for our coverage on the show. But out of the way, thank you for clicking this. Now let's get into The Walking Dead. It's a bottle episode. Well, tell your disappointment to suck it. I'm doing a bottle episode. Now we pick up just before Michonne and Rick took the plunge and get cut to the futuristic looking home. This is a little 2000s nod as it's what they were concept in stores to show what homes could look like now. The first automated homes came about in 1999 with Microsoft even putting together what one could look like today. This included things like pocket PCs in which people would email each other back and forth on the way to the house. They also had a web phone with a screen which connected to the internet and this plugged directly into your router. Wow, it's just like how we live today. Now they of course didn't count on smartphones but they did at least get the Roomba right. One of them rolls out, but this is accurate due to it being around in 2010. That's why Michonne had one, and over the top we can hear the song tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree, which is about a lost loved one. It's fitting here as Michonne and Rick still feel like they're apart due to him feeling like he's stuck with the CRM. Now, I have to say, I was a bit disappointed that they kind of brushed over them just falling in the water, because I was expecting something big like them hitting the trees and crashing down. Suppose they just kind of needed to get to the home, but yeah, I felt this was underdeveloped and it did take me out of it a bit. Ah, we just landed in the water and swam away. Now, the CRM are supposed to be merciless hunters, and I did expect them to be immediately on the run. I even thought this might be one of Rick's dreams at first, in which he envisioned the perfect life similar to his visions in the season. Turns out though that their helicopter went down in the storm, so technically Michonne saved their life. I do wonder if they're going to get blamed for bringing it down, and then Alexandria might get targeted in retribution. Either way, it gets destroyed, which is the CRM once more covering up evidence. This is something the military carry out in real life, but they've now shifted to having that tech on board. Advanced fighters can self-destruct if crashed, and this stops enemies from learning about their secrets. For example, the F-22 has small detonators that blow up key components, and this is to stop tech from getting into the wrong hands. Either way, we watch as they get to the home, which has a large rectangular window. This is similar to the montage shots from the first episode in which the CRM worked a way to build a new base. That in turn would build Rick a home, and I felt it represented a new home here with Michonne. But I'm not a rapper. Cut to the title sequence again where we can see the pair are once more together over the logos. Something else that I noticed in the map is that we can see the three bases that the CRM have. However, there's also a nuclear sign at the bottom which is a direct nod to season 6 of Fear the Walking Dead. That involved the nuking of Texas, and it may tie into the secret that the CRM is hiding. I do kind of feel though that they're working on a cure which has been teased to us in the world beyond. Either way, they finally have a look about and we can also catch the old Windows pipe screensaver which makes me remember the good old days of LimeWire. Our editor Matt pointed out Microsoft HQ is in Redmond, Washington and they may have even fallen near there. That's located in the Pacific Northwest so we can catch a bookshelf with old computer textbooks. This could in is to why the CRM are heading here as there might be some boffins located in the area. They could possibly help them establish the cure, but that's just a theory time, theory time, theory time, bring it back. And Michonne starts to get undressed and we can see the X scar on her back which she got in season 9. Rick left during episode 5 of the same run with the episode scars being 14. That's the story she tells later with Jocelyn and she and Daryl were captured and then branded. Michonne killed them all including the kids cause fuck them kids they probably didn't even hit the thumbs up. Rick then gets his own X on his back, eh? Because they argue over the PRB, which we learned more about last week. This can signal choppers from over 300 miles away, and I think it might be used to lead the CRM into a trap. Michonne learned things about the explosives from Nat, and I feel like that was put in for a reason. Rick and her could potentially set a trap and then lure a helicopter with a PRB. Michonne then pulls down the Ramona the Pest book, which is about someone who goes around messing stuff up. Bit of a reach, but this could mirror Michonne, who's become a disruptor in the CRM. Last week, Beale talked about Formicon and how he felt like Rick could be the disease. Feel like that's what we have here, with these two causing issues with the Civil Republic. Michonne also talks about what she studied in the old world and how she constantly kept changing her mind. 
She then dropped out, which we've seen literally, because she made my man Rick drop out of that chopper. Now finally the penny drops that Rick's got other kids, because Michonne calls them children and says how they won't see their father. Rick was gone before RJ was born, and Michonne kept him secret during episode 2. There were certain things that she wouldn't bring up, because she felt like it might throw him off. Here though, she needs to bring him home, and it shows how desperate she is. You get a bloody good argument, mate. Felt, felt awkward watching. This was like watching my parents guard it, and it's the first time that I really felt Rick was desperate. Even against the governor Negan, he had hope he could win, whereas here he's just resigned to the fact that they've already won. He begs for the responder back, and says that they won a long time ago. He also says we have to go back, which I felt might be a little nod to Lost, because cause of John Locke. Now he tells her about Jadis, and how she would have let Michonne get away if Rick had have stayed. It's something I didn't even really touch upon last time, but it shows how much Jadis knows the pair are dangerous. The CRM of course have a no escape policy, but she was willing to overlook it to keep Rick sweet. Michonne then starts brainstorming a plan about finding the evidence in Jadis' place. If she died, this would implicate the pair and lead them directly to Alexandria. So they want to find that, kill her, go to the Winchester and wait for it all to blow over. Rick has just resigned to his fate though, and I felt like deep down he might actually like the CRM. Now as the sun comes up, they spot the helicopter, which Michonne realises can help fake their death. However, Rick struggles with this idea and says that he doesn't want to go home. There's a theory that people actually seek order and will give up their own freedoms in order to attain it. If you look at humans hundreds of thousands of years ago, we too would have been part of the animal kingdom. Nature is bloody, violent and chaotic, and thus people sought out safety by building civilization. Even today, we see how people give up certain freedoms in order to gain what they view as safety. For example, governments spy on their own people, but this is said to avert future attacks. So people don't tend to protest it, and it's immense the idea that people give up freedom in order to have comfort. I feel like Rick was in the world against the undead for so long that he's now just more comfortable in the CRM. This also ties into people being institutionalised and being so used to things that they don't want to go. He's happy to never see his kids again because in his mind he justifies this as protecting them. Basically, a deadbeat dad, but I think he thinks he's doing it for the right reasons. Originally, he was even willing to cut off his own hand to escape, but now he prefers being stuck in the trap. However, he might just seek security, but yeah, let me know your thoughts below on his character. Either way, there's the undercurrent that these societies won't last, which is exemplified in the building itself. It's kept on a self-sustaining grid, with it being a prepper commune built to survive. That fell whilst the CRM stands tall, showing that perhaps that was the right way to go. Michonne and Rick go back and forth, and the episode's kind of a marriage story debate between the two sides. I genuinely love to hear what you guys would do. Would you join the CRM? As I think both sides have a pretty strong argument. You could say, I can see, I can see things from both sides, mate. And Michonne then starts to think she can change his mind. And I love how, as she went about the apartment, she started getting weapons. Even the lamp, just grabbing the legs from that was such a cool way to add some dynamism to the scene as she delivers her lines. She waits for him and eventually opens the door, showcasing he's made the choice to leave. However, we see metaphorically that they won't let him go, and then cut to the chopper beginning to roll in. It ends up destroying the wreck, which in turn lets the walkers come in. This whole thing reminded me a bit of The Last of Us, when you have to manoeuvre through the skyscraper in order to escape. Michonne drops her knife and then jokes at Rick's commando, which is a little little joke about the Oni movie and how he's been acting. Rushing underground, she then discovers a note from the guy who set up the homes. It reminded me a lot of the guy from the season 1 finale and him realising that he couldn't save the world. The guy also electrocuted his brain and this was to ensure that he couldn't reanimate. Pretty clever, as even though he died, he didn't make the world worse by making another walker. Everything then starts crumbling and they bust out, which leads to some pretty good action beats. In the end though, Michonne gets trapped too, which carries a lot of symbolism. The roles are reversed here, with Michonne telling him that he's the one that should go, whilst she's the one who's now stuck in this place. It shows that Rick's willing to fight for her, and it returns them back to that idyllic apartment. I was wondering if there was some symbolism in the temperature alert, because it fluctuates depending on the mood throughout the entry. Might be a reach, but they finally get back together, and the skyscraper's nice enough to let them get it on. We also learn Michonne was with Nat in the mall for a year, and this is why she's desperate to get back to her kids. Rick also asks about Junior, and they discuss why they didn't have crops here. Rick brings up as sometimes crops fail, and that you've got to burn it in order to bring it back. This of course calls back to episode 1, in which he brought up the story of his father's farm. His dad had to burn their crops to save them the next year, and it's sort of like poetry they rhyme. Rick's dream of coal also looked like a farm, and we get flashes of it from the main show. He also tells him how that dream switched to Michonne, and it's something that kept him going. 
Once that was gone, he gravitated towards the CRM and basically... You keep finding something to fight for. He also says he was dead and came to be alive, which is a nod to how he thought that they were the walking dead. That we are the walking dead. A fire is something that's been laced throughout the series, with it starting everything on the bridge. Rick had to burn the phones in order to let go, and he also imagined Michonne getting burnt along with them. Nat kept a lighter and surrounded himself in fire, and he also used to make explosives. He died amongst a forest fire, and the episode also started with a walker setting on fire. Rick severed his hand in a fiery forest, and Michonne sparked up the lighter to signal a fire was danger. That opening title card appears like a fire too, and this is idea of burning it all down and then starting again. That's what I feel Rick wants to do with the CRM, and he feels like he can follow Okafor's mission. I feel like he's desperate to hold on to that dream he had of rebuilding with Carl, and we see the phone now with him on the front. The artist last week even brought it up. There was a boy he asked me to draw, but I could never get it right for him. Carl. And finally, we get some proper closure on his death, with that being a big moment in the show that turned a lot of people off. I think killing him off was a mistake, but I'm glad they kind of brought it back to that and used it to push Rick's character. We then see as the pair head out into the corridor and they're now much more unified in more ways than one. Here we see they've brought each other together and they go to make their escape. Also, yeah, mate, if, if a building's coming down or on fire, don't take the elevator, yeah? Health and safety, that, and I saved your life there, so the least you can do is hit the thumbs up. Now, we then see, as they hit the car, with loads of petrol in the back, which might be something used to burn it all down. I feel like the CRM's still gonna be after them, and though it seems like they got away scot-free, we'll see where things go next week. Also, Rick can't drive stick. But I'm not a rapper. Anyway, that closes out another crappy breakdown, and a huge thank you for checking us out. Please drop your thoughts below, as I'd love to read them too, and if you want to support the channel as a member of the Spoiler Society, then please click the join button. We get early access to videos every week, and it goes such a long way to helping us out. If you want to get some heavy spoilers merch, we've also got a t-shirt line located below the video that will let you pick up all kinds of tops like our new time on, House of Dragon stuff, me and the boys, and a lot more. We drop new designs on there all the time too, so keep an eye out if, if you please. And if you want some else to watch, you've got a breakdown of last week's episode on screen right now go in all the ins and outs of it, talk about all the easter eggs, and huge thank you for everyone who joined us on that. By the way, huge thank you for sticking through the video as well. I've been your host Paul, you've been the best, I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.